In this video, I'll show you how to write a script that will allow you to customize how your spell's output is displayed in chat. So for example, we'll learn how to do Magic Missile so that you can select what level you're casting at, the appropriate number of darts get rolled, and the appropriate spell slot gets deducted from your character sheet automatically. All right. Let's get started. And before we dive into the code, I do need to throw the disclaimer that we will be using the API for this and therefore it does require a pro subscription. Okay, let's get started. Now I want to begin by showing you what our final output is going to look like. So I'm going to go into my attributes and abilities section of my character sheet here and you see I've got this magic missile ability set up. So I'm just going to click on the edit button here to show you what that looks like. And so as you'll see, I've got an API command here called custom spell book. I'm passing in the name of the spell that I want to cast, and then I'm prompting the user what level do they want to cast at. All right, so that's kind of what we're going to be working towards here. Now, you may be asking yourself, Nick, why are you bothering with this? Because if you have the 5e companion sheet, you can have it automatically deduct spell slots. You can just click on Magic Missile here, and you can see there's our, our dart, and we deducted one spell slot. So there's really no need for this. Well, that's true if you are running rules as written. Rules as written for Magic Missile says that you use the same die roll for all your darts. So at a level 1 Magic Missile, which is going to create 3 darts, each one of those darts would deal 4 points of force damage based on what I rolled here. And going by Sage Advice, that is rules as written, but as you can see here, rules as intended, it doesn't matter, you choose. And every wizard I've ever played with and every DM I've ever played with has allowed the rules as intended. I've never seen anybody use one roll for all the damage. So if you keep clicking here, like if I'm going to do this again, you see, okay, there's my second dart, there's my third dart. You see that it's automatically deducted me down three spell slots when it really only should have been one. So what I want to do is have my script just be able to roll the darts individually and then deduct one spell slot. All right, let's get started. We'll begin by going into our game's settings page, and then we'll go settings, API scripts. going to make a new script here, and we'll scroll down. I'm going to call this script custom spellbook. And let's make this a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to read. Okay. So basically what we want to start out with is to check to see if our custom spellbook command has been typed into the chat box. So we're going to say on chat colon message. So when a message is typed into a chat, we're going to run it through this function right here. And basically it's whatever is in between these two curly braces. Okay, so what we want to check is was the message that was typed into the chat box our custom spellbook command? So we're going to say if msg.type equals equals API. So if it is an API command, that is, it starts with an exclamation point, and msg.content.index of exclamation point custom spellbook equals equals zero. So what we're saying here is if the message type is an API command, that is, it starts with an exclamation point, and it begins with the phrase custom spellbook, then we're going to do whatever's in between these curly braces. Okay, now, if we go back to our game here, and I look back at my ability that I created, you see that we have a couple of arguments that we're passing in. We're passing in the spell's name and the spell's level. So, we're going to say var args equals msg.content.spell. Split. So basically what we're saying here is we're taking the text of the message that was typed in and we're going to split it into pieces. And so we need to say what character we're splitting at. Now, if I look at this, I can see each one of my, my parameters here, the name of the command, the spell name, the level, they're all separated by spaces. So I could do this where I split with a space and that would work just fine. But 
I want to give a little bit more flexibility here. I want things to be a little more forgiving. If somebody accidentally types, say, two spaces, or if they use a tab character or, or something like that, I want the script to be able to handle that. So instead of splitting just at a space, what I'm going to tell the script to do is split at any white space that it finds. And the way we're going to do that is with a regular expression. Now, if you've worked with regular expressions before in any programming language, you know how involved they can be. They're sort of a very complicated syntax, but we're going to try and keep things simple here. I'm going to say split, and I'm going to put in two forward slashes. And this is going to define my regular expression. So everything in between those two slashes will be the regular expression. So I'm going to say backslash s plus. All right, now backslash s means any white space character. And the plus means match one or more. So if there are two spaces or two tabs between each of the arguments that we pass in, the split will still work just fine. And remember what the split is doing is it's going to take that string that we've typed in and it's going to split it into an array. And that array is going to have three elements. It's going to have custom spellbook as item zero, because remember the arrays are zero based. The item one will be the name of the spell and item two will be the level. Okay, so what I'm going to say here is I've got args. We're going to say var spell name equals args one. So that's the name of the spell that we're doing. And then we're going to say var spell level equals args two. Okay, so now you may be asking, well, why are we putting the spell name here? Aren't we just casting magic missile? Yes, absolutely. But I want this script to be flexible so that we can add other spells to it later on. Because you might want to do something similar here for, say, Scorching Ray or, or some other spell where you can have a variable number of rays with different uh, attack rolls or different damage and then tweak the spell slot that gets used accordingly. So because of that, what I'm going to do now is use a switch statement. We're going to say switch spell name. So depending on what spell gets passed in, we're going to do whatever's inside these curly braces. So what I want to say is if the spell that was entered in is magic missile, then we're going to do something for magic missile. I'm going to actually say we're going to cast magic missile and we'll pass in the spell level. So a couple of things that you're noticing here. First of all, we've got this case here where we're saying if magic missile was passed into the custom spellbook command, right? But notice magic missile here, this is all lowercase. And there's nothing restricting me from typing this in in uppercase or in camel case or something like that. So I want my script to account for that. So what we'll do here is we'll take args1, we'll take the name of the spell, and we're going to convert that to lowercase. And that way, doesn't matter how somebody types it in, we're going to convert it to lowercase, and then it's going to match the name of the spell here in the case statement. All right, second thing is that now we have this magic missile function that we're calling. We need to actually make that. So let's come down here, and we're going to say function magic missile. And again, we're passing in the spell level. And that's going to have curly braces like so. Okay. And what we want to do is determine the number of darts that our magic missile is going to have. So I've pulled up my trusty notepad window here to help illustrate this. When you cast a level one magic missile, then that results in three darts. And when you cast a level two magic missile, that results in four darts. And then level three results in five darts and so on. So as you see here, basically the number of darts that come out with the spell is the level of the spell plus two. So what I'm going to do here is say variable number of darts equals spell level plus two. All right, so that gives me my number of darts that my spell is going to fire off. Okay, so now what I need is a variable to hold the output of each dart roll. So we're going to roll the appropriate number of darts. We're going to store the results of that into this variable here that I'm going to call var dart output. And I'm going to initialize that to be an empty string. Okay, now we'll get to actually rolling in a minute. 
But just to kind of talk you through the process here, we're going to roll the number of darts and then ultimately we're going to create a message that gets sent into the chat. We're going to use the default template that our character sheet provides to display that we were casting Magic Missile and here are the results of each dart die roll. So for that, I'm going to say var output message equals, so I'm going to start this off with a back tick and then and open curly brace template colon default. So we're going to send in the uh, default template here with a name of magic missile and then dollar sign curly brace dart output close curly brace and an ending back tick and a semicolon. Okay, so what is this line doing here? We are creating a string, but we're using back ticks instead of quotes. What's what's up with that? Well, JavaScript has this really nice ability called string templating, which allows you to create strings using back ticks instead of quotes. And the advantage this provides, you can then insert variable values directly into the string using this dollar sign curly brace syntax. So we're going to take whatever's inside Dart output here and just stick it into this string right here. Okay, so that's what's going to ultimately be sent into the chat but we gotta roll our damage for our darts. So after we declare dart output, we're gonna put in a for loop. We're gonna say four, and then I'm gonna say counter equals one, and we're gonna do this loop while the counter is less than or equal to the number of darts that we're rolling. And then we're going to increase the counter by one. So we'll say plus plus, there we go. And then we're gonna do whatever's in between these curly braces here. and really all we're, we're doing here is we're going to add the damage for each dart to our dart output. So we're just going to say dart output plus equals. This is the way of saying append this value to the dart output variable. And we're going to do another uh, string template. We're going to do another couple of back ticks there. And we're going to say dart and then put in the counter that we're currently on counter equals and then our dart damage which is 1d4 plus 1 and then our closing curly braces here all right so what I'm going to do right now is log this out just so you can see what it looks like so we're just going to say log output message right and I'm going to save my script and then I'm going to go back into my game and I'm going to put in my custom spellbook command and we're going to run Magic Missile, and we're going to do level one. And now if we come back into our output, all right, and now you can see in the log, we've got template default, Magic Missile, Dart, 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 Dart. So that, that's what the output's going to look like. So what I want to do is have this show up in the chat. So we'll actually plug this in. So I want it to look like this. And I realize as I look at this, I have a minor typo in my code. So I'm going to go back into my script here and I'm going to change this name colon magic missile to name equals magic missile. That's going to give me exactly what I want. So we'll just uh, save that so that that's corrected. And then the final thing that we want to do is actually send this into the chat automatically. So we're going to say send chat and we're going to say this chat message is coming from the API and it's going to be the output message. And so we'll save this. And now if I go back into my game and I run the custom spellbook command, there we go. There's our magic missile and our three darts have been rolled. And if I do this uh, with magic missile two, now we've got four darts being rolled. If I've got magic missile three, I've got five darts being rolled. So there we go. So that's working properly. Fantastic. Okay, so we are halfway home now we've got the appropriate number of darts being fired off and their damage now what we need to do is decrease the spell slot that we've cast from so for that what i'm going to do is piggyback off of another api script uh, the one that i'm going to use is this chat set attribute script this is available as part of the standard roll 20 api library so you can just install it right from the script library here. And what this allows you to do is modify certain bits of information on your character sheet through the API. So what I'm gonna do 
is after I have cast my spell, after, after we've gone through here, we found the spell that we're going to cast, we did that, then right after the switch statement, we're going to put in the command to decrement the appropriate spell slot. Now, in order for that to work, we need to know what character is actually casting the spell. So kind of what I'm envisioning here is I have my character's token selected, and then, like what you saw me do earlier, I click on Magic Missile from the toolbar here, so I've got the custom spellbook command set up as an ability on the character sheet so that we just run the, the special command right from there. So in order for that to happen, I need to get some information about the selected character. So we're gonna start out here by saying var token id so the selected token will be msg selected zero dot underscore id okay so what is this doing this is saying take the token that is selected at the time that this custom spellbook command was typed into the chat and get its id from there we're going to say var token equals get object graphic comma token id so in roll 20 graphics can be tokens or cards or maps but basically what we're saying is get me the object on the board that has this token id so we're going to get a reference to that item and then from there we're going to say var char id equals token dot get represents so what character does this token represent and then finally we're going to call the chat set attribute command to decrease the spell slots. So we're gonna say send chat. And I'm actually gonna type this out first and then I'll explain what it's doing. Okay, so I've just put in that command and so what we're saying here is exclamation point mod B A T T R that's saying we're modifying an attribute on a specific character. So dash dash char ID is looking for a particular character ID. And you'll notice I'm doing another string substitution here. I'm putting in the character ID of the character who's currently selected. And then we're looking at LVL and then our spell level slots expended. This is saying get the number of spell slots for that level that's specified. So level one, level two, level three, whatever it is. And this minus one is saying decrease that value by one. So when we start out with four spell slots available and we cast, then we're going to decrease the spell slots available by one. Okay, so now let's save this, and we'll take it for a spin. So let's go back into our game here, bring up my character sheet, and I'm just going to show you the ability I created earlier. So let's just edit this. And as you can see, it's just the custom spellbook command, the name of the spell, Magic Missile, and then I'm prompting the user for what level Magic Missile are we casting. And I'm putting in each option separated by a pipe. This is just so that, you know, somebody can't put in that they want to cast a level 200 magic missile or something like that. They're going to be limited to the uh, appropriate spell levels. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's try this out. I'm going to save this and we'll run it. And we're going to say we're going to run this at level one. You see, I have currently have three slots remaining. I'm going to cast at level one. And the number decreased, and I've got the appropriate number of darts over here. So that's how we can create a custom spellbook in the API that will automatically fire off the appropriate number of darts for Magic Missile and decrease the appropriate spell slot accordingly. So like I said, we can extend this. I have plans for future videos where we can do things like Scorching Ray or other spells that have similar behaviors, so stay tuned for those. But in the meantime, if you found this video helpful, Please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.